The pandemic has forced many artists to find new ways of reaching an audience, especially with virtual performances. One example is an upcoming performance on Valentine's Day. It's called A Romantic Journey Through Music and Art, with selections from Art Song, Broadway, and The Great American Songbook. To explain how they'll make this musically and visually engaging are three of the main contributors, artist Misha Len, soprano Olga Lisowska, and pianist, arranger, and composer Maxim Lubarsky. Thank you all very much for, for joining us today. I, I want to start with, with, with Olga because uh, if this had been a more uh, typical year on uh, Valentine's Day, maybe you would have had a musical cafe. There would have been a live audience. So, so, so um, what do you do now? Absolutely, Chris. Uh, I would have done something like it because every year for Valentine's Day, it's such a beautiful occasion to make these concerts, events where people can come together, where, you know, loved uh, lovers or uh, husband and wife or just friends can come and have a beautiful evening and uh, sip some tea and have some dessert. So this year, everything is diff difficult and different. However, we don't want to miss the opportunity and wish everybody happy Valentine's Day and bring them joy and beauty. And so the three of us, we came up with this amazing idea of bringing uh, music and art together to the audience members uh, in the Boston area and of course throughout the world because it's going to be virtual on Facebook live on uh, Valentine's Day on February 14th at 5 p.m. Well, you know, in, in a normal in-person performance, you know, a lot of people can be totally uh, enthralled with just one singer and one person accompanying on a piano, let's say, but uh, you got a visual um, element here. So, uh, Olga, first of all, why, why did you want this extra visual element. So when Maxim and I, we came together in planning this performance, we thought uh, right now all of our business communities and artists from different genres, from musicians, uh, you know, painters, uh, actors, dancers, they're all uh, looking for an outlet and our audience members are very hungry. You know, I speak with my friends and they're saying we miss so much this live performance. We, we miss so much socializing with each other. And so uh, Maxime and I, we came up with an idea of including as much of different, uh, you know, senses as possible you know it's not going to be only music um, you know instrumental because Maxim is going to play something or vocal I'm going to sing opera as you, you mentioned and art song and Hollywood and Broadway so just everything but there's going to be this visual part of it and I would like Maxim to elaborate more and business uh, local businesses are bringing the fun part uh, for our audiences to give a prize uh, to a an audience member who has donated any sum of money to this uh, performance and will have it like a lottery at the end of the program. Uh, Misha, you come from St. Petersburg, which has this great tradition going back more than a hundred years ago to the days of Stravinsky, Leon Box, these, these, these wonderfully visually engaging uh, ballet performances. Uh, how does that uh, influence what you're doing now? So basically my, my life is connected to music all the time. Even if the viewer careful look at my paintings, uh, uh, one can find uh, the musical scores that I include all the time. It gives the essence of the music. And uh, I think combination of music, ballet, and uh, the art, it's, uh, it's a great combination. So that's, uh, it's what I do, what I love to do. And you know, we all do the best when we love what we're doing. So, and I love my, my art, I love my profession. So that's, uh, that's the way. I, I looked at some of the clip here you know, with, with Olga, uh, an excerpt from singing Schubert and another excerpt from George Gershwin. The, the background, it doesn't exactly illustrate the song in a, in a, in a point blank pictorial way, but, but what are you striving for with their visual combination? So uh, I was looking, uh, we didn't have much of time and to choose between the paintings that I have and we're trying to find the best one that sort of will complement the songs. And uh, Olga did a great job of choosing between what we have. And uh, I think it's sort of, it gives the essence at least to give the viewer different, uh, uh, not only hearing, but uh, give them the path, maybe to go one direction or another. And people while listening, they can fantasize about something and it gives them the whole thing 
the whole amount of different feelings together. So it, it, I think it's, it's, it's really, it works really nicely. Uh, to be precise, so I think, uh, look in the paintings, it's uh, complement the pieces beautifully. So that's, uh, and Olga, thank you very much for uh, choosing the right one. I, I want to turn now to, to Maxime Lubarsky. Uh, Maxime, you, you, you're the accompanist, but you, you really have to have quite a range to, to given the kind of selections here, you know, everything from Schubert to, to Broadway, uh, the, the American Songbook. Uh, but tell me how that fits into your own trajectory, what you've studied in music starting from Odessa. Uh, well, hello, first of all, Chris, and thank you for having us. Such a pleasure to be here. And uh, um, I, uh, I guess as far as trajectory and my personal musical journey, uh, I guess, um, at this point, I can say uh, I've more and more have come to, with years of playing music, I've been doing it for quite a few years. Uh, I've more and more come to a realization that eventually it's all music. Music is way more connected than we tend to think often and dividing into genres. Every genre has certain obviously influences and certain traditions, but there are much more that connects music. And that's kind of how I look at it, generally speaking. But as far as my education, uh, I started and I studied what we you know, call, I guess, classical music, generally speaking, uh, since I was six at a special music school and then conservatory. Uh, I've been always interested in other genres, probably later in the school. I got more into, uh, again, what we generally would call jazz music and was developing into that direction uh, by playing. I had my group touring and things like that. Uh, I was interested in continuing my studies. So uh, as I graduated from conservatory uh, back in uh, Odessa, I got scholarship to come to Berkeley and I came to Berkeley and I graduated from Berkeley uh, studying jazz and other genres of music and playing. And uh, uh, since then, I, uh, not to sound not humble, but I think I've played quite a wide variety of music. So, uh, and uh, I really do approach it from the point, you know, it's all music. I'm trying to make the best of everything. And I really kind of for myself divide music by, Two categories: the one I like and the one I don't like. Uh, so if I if I like if I enjoy playing it, I'm happily uh, I'll happily do that, and uh, um, and it just keeps keeps it more interesting. Uh, I keep forcing opera on Maxime every time we do a concert. I throw in some opera arias, and he's just an amazing uh, pianist. He can do anything. I, I, I want to go back to Maxime. I, I know you, you, you seem to be tilting toward jazz more than anything else. What draws you to jazz? Wow, that's a good question. Um, um, I would have to think of that. Uh, 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 I guess freedom in a certain way, freedom of expression. Uh, I try to approach music this way, whatever music I play. Uh, uh, with uh, respect to the tradition, respect to the foundation, but the freedom, the freedom of spontaneity, the freedom of being able to create in the moment, being in the moment and kind of watching the music unfold as it's happening. Um, and I think that's kind of at the core of jazz music or improvised music uh, for that matter. So being, being able to create in the moment, being able to sometimes not know what's going to happen in a second and just seeing it at full, seeing it happening as it goes and just seeing where it goes. So I think fundamentally that would be the answer. If I can I may jump in, I would say that Max, when he's playing, he always disappeared in the music and that's really amazing. And it's exactly many, many years ago I came to him because I, I saw the guy who was completely in the music. He was in a different world. So that's, uh, it's, it's great. Thank and you, now we're going to be in a different world inside a painting of Michelin. <laughs> you know, Misha, you, you've done work uh, uh, not just in connection with music, but you know, events, you know, Kentucky Derby, Boston Marathon, and 
from one angle, it seems that these imposed conditions are even constraints, but do they spark you? Do they make your imagination come up with new things too? Uh, first of all, I want to mention another thing that you uh, that maybe you didn't know. I work for uh, Boston Pops, and I was the official artist for jazz uh, Tango with Jazz Festival. So basically, uh, any direction, anything connected to music, to movement, to anything that moves, it strikes me. I love it. I love it. And basically, uh, everything that has a movement of people, people can speak by turning their heads, their their shoulders, their anything. So when I when I jump into the into the um, idea, I'm there. It's like Max when he is playing the music, whatever music he plays, he's in. The same with me. I'm in in anything I do. So that's basically it's uh, what's supposed to be. So that's I would say that. Right. Yeah. Finally, I want to turn to Olga here because uh, a little bit more information about the event because this is not just a tune in, you know, watch and, and listen, but but also you know you got to do something with maybe some of these paintings to help some of the supporters and some businesses. So if people want to get to that, what do they need to do? So we do have like a tinyurl.com romantic journey concert. So that's easy to remember, romantic journey concert. So it's tinyurl.com slash romantic journey concert. And it's going to be live on Facebook at 5 p.m. on Valentine's Day. So you can be with your loved one, uh, with your family, sipping some wine, watching beautiful art and music. And at the same time, if you would like to uh, interact with us, please write your comments on Facebook Live and also please donate to support the arts. And uh, all the donations are entered automatically into a lottery and uh, winners will be announced at the end of the program or in the uh, comments, you know, if we are gonna have too many donations then we won't be able to kind of keep track of everybody, but we will announce a few prizes. Uh, I know that there's gonna be wonderful prizes such as beautiful cake for Valentine's Day by Nata's Baking. And there's so many uh, businesses that came to me uh, and I was very pleased to see that the community wants to participate in this. We are, you know, artists are like the glue of the uh, canvas uh, of the community that people come to arts in all different times and right now it's a difficult time and it, you can't imagine a day uh, today in the pandemic without people watching videos or watch or listening to music and so we are giving them this opportunity to come and to participate and um, so we'll have romantic getaways we'll have uh, fancy wines, we'll have, uh, um, you know, spas, and of course the designers, my my special ladies, Inga Puzikov, Jewelinga, she gave me beautiful uh, jewelry I'm actually wearing, and I'm going to be wearing all these beautiful hats, creations of Nina Bublik designs in the uh, concert, so everybody came together and, and uh, put together this beautiful, beautiful and exciting program. Right, the art of social media as well. Thank you all very much for taking the time to join us. Thank you. That was Misha Len Olga Lisolskaya and Maxim Lovarsky. Thank you all very much. Thank you. We'll have more news. We'll have in just a moment.